Hey, so we're going to look at uh, confidence intervals, starting with the confidence intervals of the mean. Um, this content has a lot of theory and conceptual stuff that's hard to understand. But once you kind of have the general idea of what the problems entail, the actual work to complete the problems is not generally that difficult. So I'm going to do a couple examples here, and then we'll talk about in a separate video uh, how do you distinguish one type of problem from the other? Because that's really where the work uh, and the hard part comes down to. So we'll start with uh, an example, confidence interval of the mean. We have a survey of 45 randomly selected homeowners, and we found that they spend a mean of $67 per month on home maintenance. Construct and interpret a 99% confidence interval for the mean amount of money spent each month on home maintenance for all homeowners. Uh, then there's a second question. Do your results support the claim that the average household spends less than $7 per month on home maintenance? And at the bottom it says, assume the population standard deviation is $14 per month. So, in this assumption that the population standard deviation is $14 per month, <clears throat> that's telling us that the population standard deviation sigma is known. So in a, when we figure out our given values, we see that the sample size n is 85. Um, we see that the sample mean, so in this, in, of these 85 homes, they found the mean was $67. So that's of the sample, that's our sample mean X bar, $67 per month. And then <clears throat> the population standard deviation is given at $14 per month. And we're gonna also identify what alpha is. So remember alpha is the area <clears throat> outside, <clears throat> excuse me, outside of the <clears throat> uh, 99% or it's in both tails, but the total area outside of 99% would be 1%. So to find alpha, you take one and you subtract the 99, you get 0 0.01. Okay, so then finding the 99% confidence interval of the mean when sigma is known. So there's three different ways to look at it. We could look at it as the sample mean plus or minus the error, or we could look at it with interval notation, the sample mean minus the error up to the sample mean plus the error, or we could look at it as an inequality where the, the population mean is sandwiched between the sample mean minus the error and the sample mean plus the error. It doesn't really matter which of these three we use. Um, slightly matters for some of your homework questions, the difference in how you input the answer, but the answers are all going to be the same. Um, we, I just wanna note here that the assumptions um, are met for us to be able to do this work. So the assumptions are that we had a simple random sample that was kind of assumed up here in this randomly selected home homeowners. And then our, our initial distribution either has to be normal or n has to be greater than or equal to 30. And in this case, n is 85. So we're good to go there. So our job now really is just to find the error. And we're going to use Excel to find the error. So using Excel, the error, the margin of error can be found um, because we know the standard, the population standard deviation sigma, we're going to use confidence.norm. And the values that it wants are alpha, the standard deviation, in this case for the population, and the sample size n. And we already have identified those values. So in Excel, we're going to type confidence.norm 0.01 for the alpha, 14 for the standard deviation, the population and 85 for the sample size. I'll just show, you, show myself doing that real quick. Um, okay, move myself out of the way. So in here equals confidence dot norm, I'll click on it. Alpha, you can see underneath here it's saying what's alpha. 0.01. Then it says, what's the standard deviation? So the important thing here is that this is not the sample standard deviation. This is the population standard deviation. Uh, otherwise, we have to use the confidence dot t. But when we know the population standard deviation, we're using confidence dot norm. And then the size of the sample 
given at 85. Plug those in and we get 3.9114 dot dot dot. Um, you know, this is money, so I'm going to go to the nearest cent, 3.91. Oftentimes you go to one more decimal place than the statistics you were given, so that would be to the nearest tenth. Um, because it's money, I'm going to go to the hundredth. It kind of depends on the context and what it, you know, for us on homework, it'll, it'll tell you what to round it to. Um, so I would be careful in the rounding there. Okay, and then we can list our results um, in several different ways. So we could list them as, you know, X bar plus or minus the error. That would give us $67 for X bar plus or minus the $3.91. That's the error. Or if we go ahead and do that addition and subtraction, the X bar minus the error, 67 minus 391 is 6309. 67 plus 391 is 7091. And that gives us an interval of values. That is the confidence interval that we're looking for. Or we can look at it as an inequality that sandwiches mu, the population mean, between the two values. And the two values, again, are 69.3 on the lower end and 70.91 on the upper end. Um, the example where I got this problem from, they rounded these values to the nearest dollar. So that would be between 63 and $71. Um, but again, it just depends on what the, what the wording says um, in terms of the rounding. So to interpret that, it says, I would write the sentence, we are 99% confident that the mean amount spent per month on household maintenance is between $63 and $71. Here, I went ahead and rounded those two. Um, the nearest dollar. You know, what does that mean? That means if we were to repeat this process, so when you, when you repeat the process, you end up having a different um, sample mean. Everything else would stay the same. The N would be 85, the population standard deviation would be 14, the alpha would be 0 0.01, but the X bar could change taking some other 85 classes. And if we repeated this process 100 times, in 99 of those times, the actual mean, the population mean, would lie between the values that we found. In this case, we found the values of 63 and 71. So it would only be one out of those times where the actual population mean did not lie between those values. So that's what a 99% confidence interval means. Um, the way we can say it is we can say we are 99% confident that, that the mean amount spent per month on household maintenance is between these two values. Uh, and then answering that second question I asked, you know, do these results support the claim that the average household spends less than $70 per month on home maintenance? Um, you know, in a sense, you could say yes, except some of the values are higher than $70. So it, in fact, the, the, the values in the confidence interval go up to $70.90. So the results do not support the claim that the average spent is less than $70 because the confidence inter includes values that go up to 7090, which is higher than $70 that we're claiming. And finally, I'll just recap this whole problem. We look at the given values and we determine whether or not we know the population standard deviation. We either know the population standard deviation or we know the sample standard deviation. If it's the population standard deviation, it will tell you, <laughs> it has to say the population standard deviation is. So that will tell us to use confidence.norm or the z-scores when we're finding our error. So we go through, identify that we have the population standard deviation and that we're looking for a 99% confidence interval of the mean. Then we can find our error using confidence.norm. And we can list that confidence interval in any of these three different ways. Um, you can basically pick your own for how you want to write it. I, I think on the worksheets, I usually use the middle one because that shows it as an interval. Um, the last one is nice because it shows you that the population mean actually lies between those two values. So it kind of gives us a little more meaning about what the, what the interval means. And then we say that we are, in this case, 99% confident that the mean is lying between the value of 63 and $71, and again, this does not support the claim that the average spent is less than $70.